I'm Kent and this is another Weekend Adventure Rides How To. Today we will be disassembling the crankcase on the XR250. Alright, before you get started, there are a couple special tools that you're going to need. And for me, the most important one was the shop manual. So get yourself a shop manual. This is gonna show you all of the specifics as far as the order in which parts should be disassembled and then how to reassemble them along with all of the uh, torque specifications. So make sure you have one of these. This is gonna be the most important tool that you have. All right, in addition to that, specifically for the crankcase teardown, you will need a case separating tool. Now this one is from Tusk. And I think these go for about uh, $69 or $70. Um, and you can get those from Rocky Mountain ATV. So I'll show you how to use that later on in this episode. Okay, the second tool that you're gonna need as far as uh, the crankcase removal would be the flywheel pulling tool. Now, these are pretty simple. They are bike specific, so make sure you get the one that is specific for the make, model, and year of your motorcycle. Now this one for the XR250 is a M20 by 1.5 right hand thread. And so this will just thread right into the uh, flywheel and remove it from the crankshaft. So you'll need these two tools plus your shop manual in order to get all this done. Okay, it's time to start taking apart this motor. Now we're gonna start by pulling off both side covers now this is technically the left side of the motor because the motor would be facing this way inside of the uh, frame. So we're gonna get rid of the sprocket here, the drive gear, this flywheel cover here, take the stator out, make sure we get all the oil lines off and just take apart the, the outsides parts before we uh, get in there and split that case. Okay, we've got this uh, bolt on the stator, or the flywheel, undone, so we're gonna take that off. Okay, we're gonna remove the flywheel. You're gonna use your flywheel pulling tool and thread it in until it completely stops. Then you're gonna use, in this case, a 22 millimeter socket, and you're gonna continue twisting that until the flywheel separates from the crankshaft. If it's really hard to turn, um, you can use a rubber mallet and impact the top of the flywheel puller. I wouldn't recommend hitting the flywheel itself, especially with a metal hammer.
All right, so I don't have the correct spanner wrench for this right now. It's in the mail. It should sp it, well, it's honestly supposed to be here tomorrow, but I, uh, it's Saturday. I really want to get this done today, so I used, uh, well, I'm, to be fair, I'm going to be re replacing this, this nut here. You're supposed to replace it. It's a lock nut on the uh, clutch. So I just used a chisel and a hammer, and I was able to get that free. So we'll continue pulling that off. Once that's free, we'll be able to pull the whole clutch basket off and uh, then get access to this whole side of the motor so we can get that all disassembled so we can do the case separation. So I guess we'll finish that out. most of that off. The spanner wrench is only $8, but <clears throat> it doesn't really matter how much it costs if you don't have it. So I'll just order a new lock nut here. And that is just, it's got a raised edge on it. You see that? And then you just take a punch, and when you get it locked in and uh, uh, torqued to the right specifications, you take a punch and you lock it in to the edge of the crankshaft there. So we got that off. There's a washer here. We don't want to lose that. Set that aside with the nut. We'll pull the whole clutch basket off. Okay, so we've disassembled everything that we can to the point of splitting the cases. Now we're going to use our case splitting tool and then three six millimeter uh, all threads to do this. So we'll get this set up here. Thank you. 
Okay, that looks pretty level there. We'll put our lock nuts on top. Those all the way threaded down. When you're doing this, you wanna be really careful to make sure that the case separator is sitting perfectly level. Make sure you double check that all of the bolts connecting the two cases, two sides to the cases are all the way out. There's none lingering around down there. Okay, now we're ready to start separating the cases. So what we're gonna do is start turning the center portion here, and this will push down on the crank, pull up on the outside portion of the crankcase. So this would be the right hand side. Yep. So we're going to start turning that down, putting pressure on the crank. I heard it pop, so it looks like we're separating nice and easy here. And then just double check that everything's coming up very uniform. That looks great. We'll keep pulling that there. And it looks like we are free, so let's try. Okay. And that is both cases separated there. So we're gonna remove our case separator. Okay, so we're gonna press the crankshaft out with our separator again, our case splitter. So we'll get these threaded in. Okay, we have our case separator set up there. Now we're going to turn it down and push the crank and balancer out at the same time. All right, after two days and several hours of work, we have successfully reduced this motor to its most basic components. And we have everything laid out here on the table. What we need to do at this point is get everything cleaned up, but we are gonna save that for another day and another episode. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and continue watching because we're gonna have a lot more content and a lot more great content as far as building lightweight adventure bikes. I'm Kent, and we'll see you next time on Weekend Adventure Rides.